Dandruff is a very common problem we frequently tackle here on The Doctors. Take a look. We received an email from Jocelyn, and it reads, Dear Docs, I have a terrible problem with dandruff. It's so out of control. In the morning, it's all over my pillow when I wake up, and all day long, I feel like my clothes are covered. I'm itchy all the time. My colleagues at work always ask me when the last time I washed my hair was. Aww. What's the best way to treat extreme dandruff? Good question. Yeah, it is a good question. And so when we talk about dandruff, the formal medical name for that is actually something called seborrheic dermatitis, which is an overgrowth of a normal yeast that lives on our skin. So it's meant to be there. It's called pittersporum or malassezia. So when you have an overgrowth of this yeast, it often really causes these red, scaly, flaky patches because your body then mounts an immune response to it. And this is a pretty severe case when you see tremendous scale like this. My only concern about this is sometimes wow. when you already have a lot of inflammation on your scalp, it actually disrupts the normal immune response and you can sometimes even get a secondary bacterial infection. So for Jocelyn, what I would probably recommend is she, do, she does see someone and make sure they do a culture swab and just ensure that it's only the normal yeast that's meant to be there. Because I actually saw a case like this where it was actually a child and she had this horrible, horrible, what they kept calling cradle cap and treating it like seborrheic dermatitis and we did a swab and it was actually Staph aureus bacteria that had colonized mm. in a secondary way. So for really severe cases like this, I do think it's worth evaluating. Now, Jocelyn did give us more information. It turns out she's tried a whole bunch of different things for this. Everything from oils to Listerine to tea tree oil to over-the-counter dandruff shampoos. And sometimes I do think with seborrheic dermatitis, this happens a lot, where people keep throwing oils at it because they think it's dry and flaky and that's going to help. But interestingly, the yeast that causes this feeds on oil. So you're really just feeding it and fueling the fire if you do that. Mm -hmm. So one of the better options would be over the counter, I think zinc or selenium are the best over the counter ingredients to look for in shampoos. But in her case, I know she's tried one prescription strength shampoo that has something called ketoconazole. It didn't work very well for her. I would try a different one called cycloprox, which is a prescription strength one that any doctor can actually take a look and if appropriate, prescribe. Um, I think also looking at her photos, she does have twists, which are synthetic hair mixed in with her natural hair. That's what was giving it that look. Exactly. Okay. And so I think a lot of times with people with synthetic hair mixed in, it can also trigger some inflammation. So, so there may be more than one thing going on here, but certainly, Jocelyn, what we would recommend is do see someone, make sure it's only seborrheic dermatitis, and if it is, maybe up the ante to a different prescription strength product for it. Well, I hope she gets some help. Yeah, and then maybe how give long, the How long after you start a shampoo will you be able to tell if it's effective or you should move on to the next possible treatment? Oh, it's pretty quick. So you would Actually, notice yeah, quick. you would okay. notice within weeks. Jocelyn, we wish you the best of luck with treating this.